Hey, today we are building an amazing computer for an amazing customer. Now, I don't usually get a lot of customers that are knowledgeable about computers, but whenever I do, it makes me really happy because I get to build a well-balanced PC that looks and performs great. So let's not waste any more time and get into the building process. As always, we're gonna start with the motherboard. This is an Asus Prime B760MA on DDR4. The only reason behind not using a DDR5 motherboard was the cost. If we had a bit more budget, this would have been a DDR5 model instead. Speaking of which, the budget that we had to work with was around $850. Not a lot, but not too little either. Initially, the customer wanted the system to be on an AMD processor, but later we found out that Intel CPUs were a bit better value along with their motherboards, so we ended up buying a B760 motherboard and an i5-12400F processor instead. For the storage, I went for 1TB M.2 NVMe SSD from X-Ray Disk. We'll be installing it in this top slot to cool it with the motherboard's heatsink. Gen 3 M.2 SSDs don't require heatsinks per se, but it's a good practice and no matter how cool your SSD is, it's always better for it to be under a heatsink. It not only lowers its temperature, but it also protects it from the dust, which is always a plus. As for the CPU cooler, we had a lot of freedom because 12400F is not a hot processor and since I've been using a lot of deep cool coolers, I know how reliable they are and I have no reason to go for something else because these ones are just perfect for the job. Besides, the customer wanted minimal RGB in their PC, so I try to stay true to that request as much as possible. When it comes to thermal paste, a lot of people think that if you do not use some expensive high-end thermal paste, your hardware is gonna overheat or something, but the reality is that thermal paste makes a very little difference in temperature, especially when the cooler makes a really good contact with the CPU. Next is the RAM. This is a Team Group T-Force Vulcan Z 32GB kit clocked at 3200MHz, another brand that I've been buying from for a very long time. Team Group provides good, reliable, but at the same time, quite affordable hardware, which is just the type of hardware I often need. I really love Team Group and I'd be honored if I ever get sponsored by them. Let's take a look at the case fans that we'll be using today. These are 120mm 5V ARGB fans from Thermalrite. You guys have probably heard of them because they've been dominating the market with their budget air and water cooling solutions. The cool thing about these particular fans is that you can daisy chain them and skip the RGB hub altogether. This is a huge factor when you're saving money because RGB hubs aren't free and when you're on a tight budget you wanna save money whenever you can. We'll be installing these fans in this Dark Flash DK360 Black EATX case. But before we do that, let's see how the graphics card is gonna fit in our case. Always make sure that your hardware can fit inside the case before you start installing anything. Oftentimes, whenever you're dealing with a large GPU, you might have to install the fans from the outside and screw them from the inside, which is more difficult, but it gives you a bit of extra room for the graphics card. Hence why I am measuring everything right now. Ideally, I wanna avoid installing the fans like this, but as you can see, we barely have any headroom towards the front side of the case, so I will be installing them in an unorthodox way to give the GPU a bit of extra breathing room. So now that we are done with the fans, let's put the motherboard in along with the CPU, its cooler and the RAM and screw it onto the case. When it comes to cable management, I like doing it prior to installing the power supply because it makes the whole process a lot easier. But, if you decide to install the power supply along with everything else and decide to manage all of the cables at once, it will be a lot more difficult because everything will be cluttered together and you will simply struggle to figure out which cable belongs to what component. Cable management usually takes me around an hour in a computer like this, so I'm gonna skip the boring process and cut to the end where we install the last component, the graphics card. There's always something about installing the GPU. Even though I spent around 2 hours on this computer, putting the graphics card in still feels a lot more satisfactory than everything else that I did up to this point. 
Normally, I would be showing you guys photos of this computer right now, but unfortunately, the power went off in the evening right before my deadline, which was at 10 am by the way, so I didn't have enough time to take photos and showcase the beauty of this PC. But I still managed to test it in 6 games and record it right before the client arrived. So, why don't we head over to those benchmarks and see how this PC performed. Let's start with Witcher 3. We are running this game on Ultra Plus settings with SSR disabled, and I gotta say, it runs extremely smooth, which is to be expected, a computer like this should run most games on the highest settings without any issues. The customer said that they didn't care about ray tracing, so we'll be keeping that setting off throughout the tests. Now even though I didn't get a chance to test this game for more than 2 minutes, I can still say with confidence that this PC will have no issues whatsoever with running Witcher 3 on the highest settings. Shadow of the Tomb Raider Same as Witcher 3, we are running this game on the highest possible settings at 1080p resolution with ray tracing disabled. Not a lot to say about this game either, it is running smooth and we are getting well over hundreds of FPS. Lately, some of you guys have been writing that I should test these PCs in modern games that have more demanding graphics, but the thing is that I cannot afford those games just yet. I don't earn enough because building and selling PCs doesn't pay as well as you might think. Besides, the currency here is not as powerful as an US dollar. On top of that, Steam and many other platforms stopped providing regional pricing to my country, which makes it even more difficult for me to make any purchases. And trust me when I say this, I wanna add those games to my benchmarks as much as you do, but unfortunately, I cannot, due to the current financial situation. The next game that we'll be testing is Doom Eternal. On Ultra Nightmare settings at 1080p resolution, we are getting around 300 FPS on average. I think this is my first time seeing this much FPS in this game, now, I don't normally recommend using ray tracing on an AMD GPU, but since we are getting so much FPS, I wouldn't be impressed if this GPU managed to deliver 60 plus FPS on Ultra Nightmare settings with ray tracing enabled. I actually wanted to test this along with many other things, but unfortunately, I was extremely limited on time and I barely even managed to test these few things that I'm showing you guys. Let's move on to a bit more demanding game. Red Dead Redemption 2. Here I chose the highest preset, and to my surprise, the computer averaged around 95 FPS. Sometimes it even went into low hundreds depending on what was going on, and it stayed above 80 at all times. By the way, I've never seen this game use that much VRAM at 1080p resolution, but then again, I've never had this powerful GPU to test the game on the highest settings, so I don't know what I was expecting honestly. The game actually looks amazing when you have everything maxed out. I bet the customer will be really pleased when they see just how well this computer performs in games. And last but not least, Cyberpunk. I always test every single higher end system in this game because a lot of people, including me, want to know how their PC would perform in a game like Cyberpunk. Ideally, I would normally drive around the city to see if I notice any stutters, but let's be honest here, this PC isn't gonna stutter no matter what. On ultra settings without any upscaling, we averaged around 90 FPS in this built-in benchmark. Overall, I think that this is an amazing gaming PC and the person that bought it will have a great time playing any game at 1080p resolution. And in case they decide to upgrade the CPU or the RAM down the line, the motherboard will allow them to do so. I even upgraded the BIOS to the latest version so that the user doesn't have to go through all that trouble themselves. And on that note, let's wrap up this video. Thank you so much for watching and as always, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.